2019, as I was looking for a way to shake up my stagnant life, I caught the touring bug. So in 2019, with my full suspension Trek Fuel EX8 and my Burley Coho XC trailer, I set out for the for my first tour ever along the coast of Lake Huron to Inverhuron Provincial Park. It didn't take long to figure out that the full suspension bike was not the right bike for touring. And thus, the search for the perfect setup for touring was born. So in 2020, I made the decision to build up a Trek 1120, and it's a decision I will never regret. 2020 is also the year I decided to ride across Canada. I pulled the trailer for the first half, but by the time I got to Thunder Bay, I realized that the trailer had to go. It was just too hard for any climbs, and it's just not a good tool for long distance touring. So after thousands of kilometers, I feel like I'm really close to the perfect setup for me. And I stress me. With the addition of new bags and cockpit changes, things are looking good. So here's what's new for 2023. Anyone who knows me knows I have always run Shimano XT and I always will. I've been running XT for over 20 years now and it has never let me down. But the big change this year is, yes, I'm still running Shimano XT, but I am upgrading from 11 speed to 12 speed. I think the big uh, improvement there is gonna be, it's just gonna give me a better gear ratio for when I'm cruising uh, and help me uh, to be able to maintain a better overall average speed. Another change I made was to upgrade the uh, rear rotor from a 160 to a 180 millimeter rotor. Um, I'm gonna, I'm thinking this is gonna help with uh, stopping power when the bike is fully loaded. That's my thoughts, anyways. Okay, so those are the changes I made to the Trek 1120. Um, aside from the stuff that we've already talked about, as far as comfort uh, changes go, uh, one thing I did do was go to a shorter stem with a more positive angle. I'm running at a 40% positive angle and um, a 60 millimeter stem, I do believe, or 50. I'd have to double check on that. I will put that on the bottom of the screen though. Um, like I said, uh, if you, everybody that's watched my videos has probably noticed I've gone through a lot of changes and I just want to point that out. If you're having trouble getting comfortable on a bike, don't give up. Uh, there's many things you can try. Don't be, a tried to f be afraid to try some things that look a little different. I thought the Jones bars were way out there for me before I got them and even when I got them. But now, um, as far as touring, I wouldn't ride without any other bar. And um, I'm not just saying that, I'm not sponsored by anybody on my tiny little YouTube channel. So this is just personal thoughts and what's working for me. So uh, the Brooks Saddle, I was already riding a Brooks Saddle, but I switched from the C15 to the C17 carved. And really right off the bat, I can tell you that was a big improvement. Grips, the ES ESI, double XL chunky grips. I really like them. I go through a set a year, but I pretty much go through a set of grips a year, no matter what grips I'm using. So um, really like them for comfort. They're really, really good. When they get wet, they dry out really fast. So it's not an issue. The only problem you have is if the bike falls over, they can tear easy. Obviously they're just made out of a silicone rubber. So ESI is the same. I'm still running the Victoria Mescals. Um, I put the rear tire on yesterday, ran out of time with the front, but we're, there will be a new one on the front as well. Then the drivetrain is still Shimano XT, but I am running the 12 speed now. Um, it's all XT except for the cassette, which is the CS6100, which is the Dior. And that's the start of the performance line for Shimano. One thing I've learned is the main thing you're saving when you go from the top end, which is XT and XTR, is the weight. So for me, that's not a concern if I'm saving, you know, half a pound or a quarter of a pound when I'm carrying so much gear around with me. So I'm still running the same Shimano XT pedals that I've been using for the last few years. Still going strong, felt no need to replace those. Spoiler alert, you may notice the, the Basil MIK bag that I have on the, on the rack on the back. Um, that's a bag that I just recently purchased after the Ortley bag uh, was damaged. Um, nothing wrong with the Orly bag as it is. It's still working great. 
but I thought I would try out the MIK bag because my rack is actually an MIK rack. And right off the bat, the fit is amazing. There's hardly no sound from the bag at all over anything. Um, a little less volume than the Ortlieb does. That's the only downside. And early thoughts are the zipper might be a little finicky, but stay tuned for a more thorough review on that Basil MIK bag. I am also running an absolute black 32 tooth oval chain ring. I've been running one for about six, seven years now, and I absolutely love them. Highly recommend, highly recommend absolute black. If anybody has any questions, comments, or anything like that, I'd really love to hear it. But um, I'm really looking forward to trying out the new setup going forward. And um, like I said, I'm really hoping for some uh, positive things as far as the new 12 speed setup. Uh, in regards to having a better cruising gear so really looking forward to all that and I'm going to share all my thoughts on what's happened with all that stuff the Niagara tour is coming up in just about five weeks now with Bob uh, Bob Julie and Jacques and um, that's going to be a great testing uh, grounds for everything hopefully Bob gets down next not next week but the following week for a uh, just a, uh, an overnighter to Wheatley which would probably be my first uh, trip video of the year so fingers crossed that the weather works out for that as far as overnight temps and uh, rain so so anyways guys I'm gonna wrap it up here I hope uh, that you enjoy the video and if nothing else at least got some information out of it that might help you in your search for the right setup as far as touring bike packing and whatnot so all right so I think I'm just gonna wrap it up here um, if you want to support the channel I have two links below one is for my patreon and one is for buy me a coffee I'm by far not a rich man, so any support from anybody, whether it's financially or just uh, moral support, is truly appreciated um, from the bottom of my heart, and I mean that. But other than that, I hope you're getting out there and doing something you love, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.